Hey, welcome. So today we're going to show you how to do a solar route in an RV. Um, today we're working in a Unity, and um, we've already kind of figured out parts of it. I'm going to give you a walk around and kind of talk from the top to bottom considerations. What's good, what's bad, where to go. So um, first off, we're inside the Unity. There is a slide on the driver's side here, which, as you can see, is pretty big. It takes up about half the rig. We're by the fridge and then the bat, like kind of bedroom area in the back, bathroom there. So a lot of different spots we could go up, but um, we're doing the solar on the passenger side. So the door, the batteries are gonna go right below this area here. Um, we're removing them from under the step. Anyway, so the solar is gonna be on the passenger side just because it's much easier to do that um, than crossing over from, let's say, we'd have to be behind the slide. So we'd have to go through here possibly down this column in the bathroom which obviously this would be preferred over the bathroom but um this is the this is the spot we chose so there's like a little pantry area here <clears throat> we have decided to pull this pantry area out and we're going to run the solar wires up this section so this area right back here we've pulled back just to expose see how that's going to work out so solar is going to run from in here and um come down we're actually gonna run right down the back here and then over solar chargers going down there. Um, but we're also doing monitors up here. So it's a, it's a dual run. We're gonna run our monitor cables also up and then across, we're gonna run them inside here in this lip, across, drill a hole here, across, and then we're gonna go back and then into this area behind the main monitor panel. So we're gonna be replacing a Xantrex with a color control and a BB712. So, we're also going to be routing a DC outlet this direction, which is going back here. So that uh, panel is being worked on right now. <laughs> Anyhow, so um, we're just trying to get the solar route. Um, considerations that we had to look at. You got your air vent up here. Uh, it's really important to pull that out and take a close look. So inside the air vent, uh, I don't have a light on me at the moment, but inside the air vent, you can see it goes back and there's a test I'll show you how to do to measure the depth. And I've actually already done that and marked this with a line. The solar wire needs to be drilled on that side of that line so we don't have to hit that. So um, we'll start there. We'll give you some examples and demonstrations here in just a sec, as usual. So now we are getting our wire out figured out here. We've got our pantry pulled out. We're looking at routing our wire through here. Um, we've got this vent located here. You always have to watch out for vents. So this is actually an intake vent. There are uh, out AC outputs along the center. The intakes are on both sides here, and which means it shouldn't go back too far. But essentially, we are drilling our hole through the roof right here next to the vent. We want to make sure that this isn't too deep. So um, running a probe back, make sure you really carefully check the back of it. We're only that far away. So essentially, I just make a mark here. I've already got a label. So if you take a peek in here, you'll see that there is a label indicating do not drill on the side of the line and I've given about an inch and a half berth so we don't get near it and that way when we drill our hole up into the roof um, we will be doing that out of the air vent and uh, hopefully out of the way of all the wiring as well <laughs> so up on the roof now we have got our penetration location figured out pretty well basically coming through right here just wanted to make sure there was nothing in the area that it was going to be penetrating uh, it looks good we got miles of room so we're going to be drilling upward for the first hole uh, to figure out the penetration location. And then once we've got that, we're going to drill down with our larger hole. Okay, so here we are again. we got our line marked. So we want to be behind that line. I've got the grommet size so that we can get the hole located in the right spot. Um, so once we've got that eyeballed, we're going to want to make a mark right in the center of where we want this ultimately to stay. So there. So we've made our mark. Now we can drill on that mark. And we're going to use a pilot drill bit. Nice and small. That way if we were to bump any wires, hopefully they just scooch aside. We're not going to damage anything. Um, this is a bit of a tight fit. I would typically recommend using a 90 or something like this. Um, and in fact, I might do that myself. So I know that we've got a nice mark. I've got my 90 degree drill here. It fits in the space a little better. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get that started carefully. 
Get it lined to make sure you're perfectly vertical. Okay, punch right through almost immediately. So instead of drilling, I'm just gonna push. Uh, might even go backwards for a second here. Actually. Okay, we have hit the surface. Should be able to turn it forward again. And we're through, just like that. Now, I'm actually gonna set this down so I can release it. That way, what we're doing is leaving the drill bit in there so that we can actually now go up on the roof and make sure that we're in a good spot. Uh, everything looks good. The reason that uh, I turned the drill bit backwards for a moment there was actually to ensure that if I was to hit any wires, the drill bit would actually naturally try and push them aside as opposed to cut into them. So anytime you're going through foam um, with a hole saw or a drill bit, you always want to go in reverse. You can, all right, go. All right, so we're back on the roof again. We got our penetration with the saw here. This, uh, in this case, is small enough that I can actually just pull it right through. Otherwise, I would have had to pull that out down below. So, um, we want to start drilling by um, using the whole saw. You can use multiple different sizes of drill, but I actually prefer a smaller drill. So the first thing I like to do is pull the whole saw off and use just the drill bit because you want to prime with the actual sized drill bit. Now, uh, with fiberglass, you always want to go nice and slow. You don't want your drill bit to actually catch kind of obvious stuff, but all right, we have gotten through the fiberglass and through the wood. So um, at this point, we should be down into foam. Yeah, so it just falls right through. So now we wanna get that fiberglass slash wood piece off. So getting the whole saw back on. Oh, I was gonna mention, I like using a small drill for this because if I was to catch anything, um, it's not gonna either break the, uh, well, wire, or whatever you might catch, nor is it gonna twist your wrist off. It's a little bit more control um, and you can feel more of what you're doing with a smaller drill. So I do prefer that on the roof. So, now to get that started. Um, to the wood. And I'm going pretty slow here, just so that I don't pop through. I'm also not pushing very hard. It's really important to push very lightly. That way the drill bit, when it, or drill, when it goes through, doesn't drop. You're not trying to chop what's down below. We're just trying to carefully get through this. There we go. And you can see it is released. So that should be out. So I actually went backwards. You might've noticed I reversed the drill bit. And guess what? <laughs> this is a perfect example. What I just did might've just saved us um, because I could have very easily run right into that Romex. But instead, I very, very carefully pressed down and removed the whole saw, or I, I should say removed that layer um, before just pushing forward. I didn't go through. Um, there's no doubt in my mind, we would have gone right through this Romex. You wanna get a close up on this? Yes. It's right in our way. Um, you can see I touched it. You can see a mark on the Romex right there. But notice that it's not damaged. If we had gone any farther, any harder, without a doubt we would have damaged that Romex. So really crucial that we don't do that. And this is going right to the, the air conditioner. So this is a very typical place to find Romex, but there is no place you can avoid finding Romex in the roof. There's gonna be Romex, there's gonna be AC and DC wiring. Mainly, um, AC wiring is gonna be on the side of your air conditioner between you know, here and here, somewhere in the middle. Um, DC wiring is gonna run all over the place. You're gonna find DC wiring running up and down the roof, right up on the surface. As you can see, this wire's right on the surface here. And um, it, it's typical, although it's, there's no standard, so you gotta be really careful to avoid these. Um, anyway, so we've, we've found out that we have Romex and we might have some other wires in here. So the next step to get this cleared out, um, and I'm gonna be very cautious because that Romex is right there. Um, typically the next step would be to remove this drill bit and put the whole saw back on. So at this point, we wanna put this in reverse. So we're not gonna catch anything. Perfectly safe, um, not gonna be hurting anything. Pushing that Romex aside is really the idea here. Now. Um, in this case, I'm gonna be really cautious to push that Romex aside. So as we cut backwards, it's out. And right about here is when I realized I made a mistake, but uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. 
So we're just gonna by hand pull out some of this foam to start off. Using this uh, pilot drill bit, the, the blunt side, to remove the foam. And Oh, and I, the one thing I forgot to bring up was a vacuum. I always mm -hmm. use a vacuum while doing this. Um, we're just gonna clear some of this foam out and get right back with you. <laughs> Quickly vacuum up what we have here. Should open up exposure. Because I've broken up some of that foam down there. Um. So yeah, what we've done here is um, we've got the Romex uh, held back with another small drilled hole on the side of this so we can get the hole saw started. Once we get this down um, past that wire, we can then pull this out and we will now continue in reverse yet again um, through that foam. And we may lose our hole saw. It's not going to fall, but it's just going to stop right there. You do want to be careful if you have the bottom hole drilled, though, because this will just fall right out. So um, we've got a little bit more. Just going to break that foam up because now we've drilled the hole even further. But this, if there's any time you are going to take your time doing during an install, this is it. You are going to take as much time as needed to get this done correctly and uh, prevent damage because <laughs> if you don't, you can end up taking the equivalent of the entire job just to repair that damage or all the profits from that job, if not more, oh, to worst repair injuries. it. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to get um, shocked. We've turned AC off, so this wouldn't have been a problem, but it's still not something you want to mess around with. Okay, so we've got our hole drilled. Um, and even I made a mistake where I could have drilled this hole. Alden showed me this trick. <laughs> you could have drilled this hole here and just pushed that wire out of the way before I marked it up. Um, and it's, like I said, it's fine. We're gonna seal it up, but that is a little boo-boo that we could have avoided. So um, once I got pushed aside, I was able to get a little more down as you saw earlier. Um, once I got to a point where the hole saw wouldn't fit anymore. Um, we just picked it out by hand. You can also use a hole saw extension. This would have been a great way to go. Nice, easy way to get all the way down. But this hole is a good four inches or so. So it's a pretty uh, deep hole. So now that we've gotten down to the plywood, I can see that there's nothing that we're gonna be damaging down there. So what we're gonna do is go on down um, and go ahead and drill up. And I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, so we're back inside. We got our larger hole saw. We got our 90 degree drill and we're ready to go. So um, back in the hole, we have got our um, tiny little pin hole there for our primer. Um, I don't wanna go up against this wood because if I did that, it would mark it up. So I'm gonna move over if I can by a small measure. To do that first though, as before, we're gonna remove the hole saw. Now, a little technique, if whenever you're removing hole saws, don't just pull on this thing, it will go shooting off. And if you're in an RV, you're gonna damage something, so don't do that. Um, so hold on to that while you catch it, if you will, while it's coming off. Uh, first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is expand this hole a little bit. And I'm trying to <clears throat> move it inward just a tiny bit. Um, and I've already got that pre-drilled. We've inspected from above, so we know there's nothing we're gonna hit into. <clears throat> and then the first thing we wanna do, once again, is go backwards. So. We're gonna get primed. Notice I'm not up against the wall now. And then we're gonna go ahead and just tap this backwards a little bit. Um, not too much pressure. We should be able to cut through the carpet by doing this. And we should be able to do it without causing any damage or catching it. So that's what we wanna avoid. You do not wanna catch this material and have it tear. So. Trying to carefully pull that out. It's glued to the wood, so you have to be aware of that. Usually I try and cut this. It doesn't seem to want to go though, so we're gonna put another little go. Still running in reverse here. Um, so next we're gonna pull this out. There we go, got it removed. So um, you see the wood. Now we're gonna go forward. So drilling forward here. Um, oh, we've got our hole. And hopefully there's enough room for the grommet on the side there. So it's kind of kind of catch, You're gonna have to be careful. Sometimes it's good to have no pressure and then just kind of tap it real hard. Uh, that, but it, you just don't want it to jump. So once you got that, bam, just like that, we're through. And once again, it's good to stop going forward 
and go backwards uh, or don't go forward once you've punched through to avoid getting into the hole and causing damage. But we already inspected down below, or I mean up above, excuse me, to ensure that there was no wires. So I was confident we weren't gonna hit anything. So that's it. Um, now, once we finish the, the work here, we should be able to get this grommet and pop that right on in. So it'll look real nice when we're all done. Okay, so back on the roof here. Um, we've got a hole that goes all the way through now, uh, but we still have to repair the little boo-boo uh, on the wire here. So once again, we have not penetrated through the actual AEC wiring, just the casing, um, thankfully. So we're gonna be able to repair that very easily. So to do that, we're gonna use liquid electrical tape. This stuff is pretty toxic, so I don't recommend breathing it. Whenever you use this, use it in a really well-ventilated area. If you're gonna get it on your hands, definitely wear gloves. So what we're gonna do is basically pull the wire out and uh, get a little coating on the actual split piece. It's ideal if this stuff penetrates a little bit, that way we can really ensure that it's coating the hole. This is more precautionary, but we do like to be safe. So um, now that I got that on there, just gonna let that go back down to its position. And what I'm gonna do is just let this dry, uh, and then we're gonna continue the work later once that is dried up. It should take a few hours. Pretty much as easy as that. So um, back here we got the wire all routed and finished, so you can see what that looks like. We run it through the back. That wire goes down in the back of this cabinet area here, right to the floor. Uh, not the floor, but you can, as you can see. And then that punches out over here and actually connects right to our uh, solar charge controller behind the drawers here. So we found a nice little home for that. Also our class diffuse on the left. Um, so that's where that all ended up. And then we also up here routed the monitor wire, sneaky, very sneaky, up above and basically out of sight for the most part, thankfully. So um, it comes around, looks pretty neat, goes into that hole there, and that leads over to our monitors. So here we've got our BMV 712 and our color control. You can see we uh, basically had to redo the whole backboard, but we decided that was a better option. So we're thinking it looks pretty good. All right, that should just about do it. Thanks for joining us.